Bonjour! Welcome to Natalingo's Natter with Natalie Paris. You are listening to episode 18. What has happened in the classroom recently? Well, at the end of last month, just before I published the latest podcast, which was all about puppets, if you're wondering, that was episode 17, I had a whole week of celebrating the European Day of Languages in schools. That's celebrating on the 26th of September every year. Anyway, in one of my schools, I had a year two class. So this is six and seven year olds. And then we were talking about jobs at an airport, jobs that people can get at airports. And then we moved on to thinking about whether having a another language, speaking another language would come in handy for that job. So anyway... The children were mentioning different jobs and one mentioned a chef. And as they were saying them, I was writing them on the board. And this year two class, when I wrote the word chef on the board, they didn't like how I wrote it at all. They thought I'd misspelt it. And they were, miss, you didn't write chef, you wrote chef. Chef? Well, of course, that's what it looked like to them. Well, that was the perfect opportunity to explain to them that it came from French, chef, and that in French, a C and an H just makes a sh sound as opposed to a ch in English. And I reminded them that there were lots of French words in the English language as well, and how when they're learning French, it helps them with their English, and how they in year two, but they already know about this French sound, this k h as they called it, that makes a sh sound in French, and not a ch. I thought that was wonderful. It was a very special moment to me being able to explain this to younger children. So I wanted to share it with you. The topic of this podcast today is phonics and teaching phonics. It's about our practice. How do we teach the, our children that we teach? How to decode the language? What the letters on paper, how they connect to the sounds that they make? And the idea came from a talk that I gave on the 5th of October 2019 at the Institut Francais in London. This was for a French Teacher's Day, which they host every year now. This talk I called Progression with Phonics and Progress within Phonics. And the preparing for this talk was absolutely fascinating. I started off as someone who just had an idea about phonics and what was out there and how it could be taught. And did up really sucked into it. And it was so interesting. I've never spent so much time preparing for a presentation ever before and I've never spent so much money either because of all the books that I bought and read to help me become a bit of an expert and making sure that I shared up-to-date information and varied information about the topic with the people I was delivering the talk to. I thoroughly enjoyed it on the day and I wanted to share my findings with you in this podcast. If you would like to see the original presentation, there is a link to this podcast that will take you straight to it on my website. So you can have all the links to buy the books if you're interested in them or where you can find more information about everything that I mention in this recording. I started off wondering if there was just one thing that we could tell our children. This is about French phonics, by the way, but a lot of what I'm going to talk about can be applied to other languages, especially, I know, to German and Spanish, which are the other languages that I know. So if there was only one thing 
that you could tell your pupils that would make them really sound a lot more French or Spanish or German or whatever the language is that you teach to them. What would that one rule be? And a lot of people in my workshop mentioned, for French, the silent consonant at the end of French words. And I quite agree with that. That is a key rule. But there were lots of other ideas as well. I also got people in the workshop to reflect on how they teach phonics. Do they follow a scheme? Do they do it ad hoc as they come along through their teaching? Do they do it all in one go at the beginning? Is it incorporated into other lessons? There are so many ways of doing it. And to be fair, if there was one way that worked for everyone, we would know about it. There really isn't. There are many ways. Some might be better than others, but there are all options and we've got to decide which one works better for us and our pupils. Now, where I am in England, we have to worry about inspections in the schools by a body called Ofsted. And the other day, I heard the um, lead for Ofsted for language speak, and uh, he mentioned that he is looking for evidence that the pupils are making progress in three areas. One is grammar, one is vocabulary, and one is phonology. That Ofsted, the inspectors think it is important, and I thought, well... Let's find out exactly what is so important about it and how we can teach our children more importantly. Amongst the different schemes and ideas that I read about and that you can find links to in the original presentation are schemes by someone called Nadine Chadia and she's come up with an alphabet coloré and in the workshop there were people who use it and absolutely love it and I saw it in demonstration, it's quite impressive. A lady in the workshop as well called Mario odile Guillou shared a PDF of French complex sound that she put together which a lot of people I know are finding really helpful to refer to. A friend of mine called Noelia recommends a website called phonetic.free.fr and she's also used Planet Phonique when teaches French. Another friend of mine, these are language friends, you make such lovely friends when you are in the world of languages, I find. Uh, Susie Buell she did quite a bit of work in the days of links into languages and uh, looked at accelerated language learning using phonics. So there's a link to a resource on the Times Educational Supplement all about this. Dr. Rachel Hawkes also has quite a lot about phonics on the website. That's a reference for a lot of people. Uh, I decided to focus on uh, three particular books and theories which seem to be very popular and very widely used. So I'd like to tell you about them. The first one is Sue Cave and Jean Higgs, Physical French Phonics, a sound action and spelling system for teaching French phonics. It's a CD that was made for specialists and non-specialist teachers and it is a sound, action and spelling system. So it's a system in itself. I picked out of this book two activities that I particularly like. One they call Pick a Consonant and basically I have a box of um, consonants they like wooden letters that I acquired as part of the game years ago and I have a box of vowels and you choose a, a vowel sound that you'd like to practice let's say the sound A ah. then you pick a consonant out of the consonant box and you put that consonant with that sound so that would make ta and practicing this and do silly voices, whatever you want to do. And then you pick a different consonant and have a go. So it could be with if you pick T, ta, 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 ta. It really gets focused on a certain sound. 
Another idea is that of the phonic hangman. So you play normal hangman, but you have a dash for a letter and you have a longer dash for maybe a phoneme that takes more than one letter. So something like lapin would look like a small dash, a small dash, a small dash, and then the longer dash. And so they're not, the children are not just guessing letters in the alphabet, they are guessing sounds and they've really got to get them right if they want to guess, get it right. When I play hangman, by the way, in the classroom, because I find it really useful to check whether the children can actually spell the words or not. I do it in two teams and the team that starts, they can keep going, keep guessing the letters until they guess one or the sound in, in this instance until they guess one that is not actually in the word and then we swap teams. And I find that really works and engages the pupils. The second book that I read uh, also includes examples in Spanish and German and it was written by Lynn Erler and Judy Prince. It's called Sounds and Words Supporting Language Learning Through Phonics. It also has a CD and was also made for specialists and non-specialist teachers. It's got support, extension and revisiting activities in it. Two activities that I really liked from it. One is called Syllable Tennis. And it's to get the children used to syllables and splitting the words up and giving them that awareness. So a word, for instance, like chocolat, you write on the board or you put on the board a, a list of words. Someone says the first syllable, sho, and the other one says ko, and then the next one, la. And all the time, every time they say one, they're just pretending to be passing a tennis ball to each other with a racket. So there's movement involved as well really gets them focused and thinking about it. Another one is called Arguing Football Stars. It doesn't have to be football stars, but really to focus the children on certain sounds. So there might be a personality, a French one and an English one. And the French one might say a sound or a certain wooden word. So it could be a, the English person could say chocolate. And the French person will go, no, 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 chocolat. You can do it for all the words that are very similar, if not full cognates, identical. Or you can do it, use it for sounds, certain sounds. Put a C and an H on the board again as an example. The English person will go, cha, cha. And the French person will go, no, 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 cha, cha. And you can have them really reflecting on how the sounds compare different languages. The last book that I bought and read for this presentation was Gianfranco Conti and Steve Smith's Breaking the Sound Barrier, Teaching Language Learners How to Listen. This was written for all teachers. It contains over 200 suggested activities and snippets of research. And it is based on the principle of listening as modeling. And it has a chapter on phonics because that goes with the listening. One of the activities that I like is called contrast response to get the children to distinguish between two sounds. Give them a different action for each sound. It could be easy ones like a, i, or it could be hard ones like on or en, whatever it is you're focusing on. And it could be that for one sound they raise their right hand, the other sound they raise their left hand. Just whatever it is, but you connect each sound to a certain action, get the children to do this. And then you can see straight away whether you read a text or you read a list of words. You get instant feedback as to whether the children can actually spot those sounds and whether they can differentiate the two sounds. And it's non-threatening for them. The other activity that I liked is called Gap Letters. It's like an exercise, you know, where you normally you have missing words. 
gapped exercise, but this time it's missing letters. And those missing letters that I've taken out will be out of a text that is rich in the certain sound that you're trying to practice. And they are the ones you're picking out. Or again, if you're differentiating between O oh or O, oh, you might be reading a text and they might have to put back in the O oh or the O. Oh. So really focusing on those sounds. I also read an article by Steve Smith, who was one of the co-writers of the last book I mentioned. And to sum it up, what he's saying is that we really need to focus on pronunciation, phonics, reading out loud, those speaking skills. Not only because it can help children understand what they can hear better and they can be understood better by the people that they're communicating with, but also because, and this is really simplified, it helps them retain the words. The words will enter their long-term memory much more easily if they have this awareness of the sounds and the links between the sounds and the spellings. So it is really worth doing. When we teach phonics, our children have got to make progress with it. In the book called Physical French Phonics, which I mentioned before, there is a seven-step teaching process to teaching phonics from sounds to words to sentences. And you can check the seven steps in the presentation. The progression in the other book, Sounds and Words, focuses on recognizing phonemes, being able to say them themselves, hearing the difference between two similar ones, then matching the phonemes to written letters and letter strings, and finally, using the phonic skills to help the children read and write words, phrases and sentences. Slightly different emphasis. And in breaking the sound barrier, the focus is on modelling, awareness raising, extensive ear training and then production. And all the way raising awareness of the alertness to sound and the children self-monitoring. I am convinced that phonics and developing phonics enables progress in all areas of learning. In England, we have a helpful document called the Program of Study. And when you look at sounds in the Program of Study, at the primary school level, what we call Key Stage 2, we've got to explore the patterns and sounds and that get the children to link the spelling, sound and meaning of words. So it's a big job already. Develop accurate pronunciation, reading aloud. When they go to secondary school, key stage three, it's moving on to just transcribing words and short sentences. They've got to speak with increasing accuracy already and uh, accurate pronunciation. The national curriculum recognises that it's an important part of learning a language we really need to. It's not there by accident. We're doing our pupils a disservice if we don't teach them how to decode the language that they are learning. When I got to university and I started doing phonetics, which was more precise science, but, you know, more developed phonics, I suppose I could call it, um, I remember thinking, there are rules about this. Why? Why? I was, couldn't understand why no one had told me them before. Why I had to wait until I'd been learning English for seven years by then before anyone explained to me when an I sounds like an E, when it sounds like an I. Okay, there are always exceptions, but the basic rules around it. I thought, what a waste of time. Why did they not tell me before? And I don't want the le my learners to grow up and say, why didn't Miss Paris tell us about this? That would have made it so much easier for us. Because it does. When I talk to secondary school teachers, because I teach in primary schools, I know that very often if we mention phonics, we said, how much would it help you if you, the children came to you and they could decode the gist of, uh, of the language, have them know the main rules? 
and they always say it would help them hugely. That would be such a good job though if we could do that. Which leads me on to my last idea, which is phonics could be used as a tool for transition between primary schools and secondary schools. If they want to work together, got to make sure that they know what phonics has been taught and what needs teaching. And they could work, agree on a way of teaching it or a method just to keep it continuous. They could work on a transition unit that was based on sounds and revisiting sounds or they could use it to do uh, what is called a baseline test just check when the children start the secondary school what their knowledge of phonics is like and use that to sort of level them. I hope this recording will inspire you to do more reading on the subject and really to revisit, rethink how you teach phonics. Hopefully it'll have reassured you that you're doing a good job and why you're doing it. If you do not include any phonics in your teaching, I hope it will inspire you to make sure that you do include it, that you realise how important it is, and anything in between. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, of course. It is now time for my nugget of French learning, which I am going to rebrand as Tips to Sound More French. And this is for you and your pupils to listen to. Bonjour, c'est Nathalie Paris ici. Today, I want to tell you about a phrase, which is enterrer la hache de guerre. And in English, it's translated as to bury the hatchet. In French, literally, it says to bury the axe of war. And this phrase goes back to Native Americans the time of Native Americans in the eastern United States and when they wanted to make peace with someone they would bury their weapons which might be axes or hatchets. Enterrer means to bury. It's got the word terre, the French word terre in it that comes from Latin and means the earth or land. You find it in English in words like territory, terrestrial. It's got the word guerre, which is war. But the word I'm interested in is ash. It's spelled H-A-C-H-E. Because really, I wanted to tell you about the letter H, which in French is called un ash. It's masculine. And then I thought of une ash which is feminine, which means a nax, and how it starts with an H. And I thought of the phrase, enterrer la hache de guerre, and I thought, right, there's my story for today. So here's your tip to sound more French, thanks to enterrer la hache de guerre. The letter H in French. Le Ash. I sometimes call it the nearly invisible letter because most of the time we just like to ignore it. Unless it's part of a sh sound, ch, we don't tend to sound it at all and we tend to pretend it's not there at all. So it is often ignored. I feel a bit sorry for it. And you can feel sorry for our ash, but when you see it, and just especially at the beginning of the word, just don't sound it, just ignore it. And if it comes after a T in French, ignore it again. We don't have those th and the sounds at all. 
So that's my tip for today. If you want to sound French, then just be nasty to that ash. Poor ash. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's name as well. <laughs> I hope this tip will help you sound more French. Thanks for listening. That's the end of episode 18. Thanks a lot for being part of it. Please get in touch with me to let me know what you think. If there's anything you think I've missed out on when talking about phonics. I'm always partial to buying a new book and doing more reading about things. Contact me on my website, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whichever way you want. I'll be very pleased to hear from you. Merci d'avance, au revoir.